Okay, so one more, one more thing. Implicit curves as opposed to explicit curves. Stop wolf whistling my curves. <laughs> that came out really inappropriate. Yes. Okay, so what I mean by this is an implicit curve is something like x squared plus y squared is 1. Why this is implicit is that you can't solve for either of the variables in terms of the other. Jeez. Right, so you would like to think to yourself that such a thing is kind of like, well, it's sort of like f of x or maybe like f of y. But on this one, you cannot get it to be one or the other. Right? Pictorially, that's because this is a what? x squared plus y squared? Circle. This is a circle. Whatever. Super wobbly circle. And this wobbly circle fails both the vertical and horizontal line tests. So it's not a function in either variable. You guys see that? Correct. That's okay, we got polar too. Yeah, so we could make a polar function, we could make a vector valued function, like there's some options. But in x's and y's, this is what's called an implicit curve. You can't make it a function of the other two variables. Cool. This is differentiated from something like uh, x plus y squared is 1, or x cubed plus y squared is 1. How about that? So why is this different? Yeah, the curve is going to be different. I don't know what the graph of this one looks like. But I can, I can actually honestly solve for x here. You guys see that? How would I solve for x here? Yeah, we subtract y squared from both sides, so we get x cubed is 1 minus y squared, and then we'd apply the cube root function to both sides. So I'd get x is the cube root of 1 minus y squared. And I have done exactly no operations that possibly ill defined Yeah, the, and the other one, the x squared plus y squared doesn't work because if you try to do this, right, you do, okay, well, I'm going to mimic that, right? I'll subtract y squared. So I get x squared is 1 minus y squared. The square root, we get plus or minus. Right? But then when I do that square root, I need a plus or minus, right? And that thing's not a function because plus or minus gives you two values. Yeah, that's going to define the domain. <laughs> On this thing, why am I not worried about that? Because you can have roots have negative. Yeah, because cube roots work with everything, right? You guys kind of see this? So if you can solve ex if you can solve explicitly for one of the variables, it's an explicit curve. This one in particular is solving for x, right? So this isn't a function in my usual way. I have to cock my head at it to get a function. function. Yeah, this is the inverse. Wow. Yeah, if you graph this, right, it'll look something like this. You guys see that? It passes the horizontal line test, so it's a function of x, but it doesn't pass the vertical line test, so it's not a function of y. Good on that? Okay, cool. So that's really all I needed was Im implicit versus explicit. And the things you need to be careful of are taking square roots of both sides. In fact, taking even roots of both sides will cause headaches. You should also be leery about dividing by variables and taking logs of both sides and other kind of similar things. Right? Anything that's got a restricted domain might cause you a pain in the ass, especially what? What are the other good examples for restricted domains? X in the denominator. Yeah, you don't want to divide by variables, right? What else? 
be careful with the trig inverse functions, right? Because you can't just hit both sides with a cosine inverse because that thing's got a restricted domain. You guys cool? All right, so that's what I want you to know for explicit versus implicit. Okay, Gabe asks a very reasonable question, which is, can you get away with like explicitizing an implicit function? And yeah, sometimes. So it depends on what you're doing. But for instance, with our circle, right? If you multiply the implicit one by x, you have to solve it. Uh, no. Okay, let's try this. So if you tried to solve this, right? So you had x squared plus y squared is 1. So you do subtract x squared from both sides, right? So you get x squared is 1 minus y squared. And then you, well, you really want a plus or minus square on both sides, right? OK, so you end up with this thing, which is x is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus y squared. Wouldn't it be plus or minus x? Yeah, trust me. OK, so I got this. Great, hooray. Uh, it's not a function. Does that mean it's not useful? It depends. This is x is plus or minus so this is x's are plus or minus, right? So that was me trying to pretend this was a function of x. So that's really me looking at the right-hand side of the unit circle, right? That's the plus x's. And the minus x's is the left-hand side. If all I care about is going on on the right-hand side of the unit circle, then maybe I'll just drop the negative one and do it like this. So I know that I can get the right-hand side of the unit circle to be an explicit function by writing x is the square root of 1 minus y squared. Similarly, I can get the left-hand side explicitly. Yeah, sometimes this is a thing you can really deal with if you just restrict yourself to one side or the other. If you need a general solution that works on both sides, this isn't going to work. You've got to deal with the implicit. But if you just care about the right-hand side, then you can pull this trick off. If you want it to work at the top or the bottom, like up here, then you need to solve for y instead of for x. Sometimes you can get away with this. Sometimes you can't. It depends on how messy the function is, too. Cool? Like a circle's pretty chill. It's got right and the left and up and a down. Those all kind of pass half of the line tests that I need. So you could get away with this a little bit if the thing's simple enough.